What's going on, Giants fans? This is Tim with Online Big Blue again, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. Oh, the voice is still crap. You know, you mix in seasonal allergies with this lack of sleep and a bunch of coffee and probably throw some alcohol in there, and it's not a good thing, but it's giving me that nice raspy sound today. I uh, wanted to address a couple things, do some housekeeping with the Giants, like we like to say. First off, let's talk about Sterling Shepard. As of Wednesday, he is not available. He is still on the IR uh, with that turf toe. Now, listen, guys, turf toe is no joke. Uh, and, and a lot, and it's one of those weird injuries. It's almost like stubbing your toe, but not really, because it really limits you from being able to push off, from being able to come back, and, you know, and, and actually put pressure on it. Uh, I actually had a turf toe twice, once in college and once in high school. It is not a fun injury when you rely on your ability to make moves and cuts and everything else. So a wide receiver, a running back, have probably. Uh, dip more of a difficulty to come back from that type of injury. And it's not something that you can rush because it's something that can actually easily be exasperated. Um, so it's something you kind of have to be careful with. And I know he suffered in week two. Um, and I know the Giants have two games in 11 days coming up. So Sterling would probably be something that we, you know, a player that we would probably need, um, you know, even going against uh, Philadelphia on thir- next Thursday night. Um, but again, it's something that we need to just be cautious with only because of the fact that you don't need him coming back and re-injuring the toe, you know, first week back, second week back. And, and that's and that's a possibility. That is a very distinct possibility of have that happen. Um, so, you know, like I said, I know we want to rush him back because you know, we definitely need him in the wide receiving core. But, you know, it's a, it's a pound of caution for an ounce of cure. Um, and I think that's what we need to kind of focus on right now with Sterling. And, you know, let's just get him healthy as possible. We're already 0-5. It's already a lost season. We have potential to be 1-5, and 0-6 going into the Philly game. So, you know, I mean, it's it, it, it's not like we need him to come back to save the season because I don't see the season being saved at 0-5. I mean, it would be, it would be one hellacious run for us to even get to eight and eight right now, you know, because we would have to go eight and three. <laughs> so I mean, it's not it's not going to happen. So let's, you know, we gave Sterling the we gave Sterling the Odell money after we traded Beckham. So you know what, we got him for a couple more years unless we waive him or trade him. But let's just try to get him back healthy, and we can help. He can help the team down the road, and maybe help salvage some of the season and kind of go from there. Uh, also, wanted to talk about you know what I, I had a I was I was chatting with a subscriber yesterday, and we were talking about the Giants draft class again. And everyone knows, and there was eighty one dislikes. The fact that I did not like the Giants draft. You know, it was plain and simple. I I thought the first two picks were stellar. Everything off that, everything off of that, I thought was either projects. Or players that may show some ability, but may not, you know, make the impact that we need. And people were like, "Well, you know," because I think there were players in certain spots that would have played immediately for the Giants um, that we missed on to take to take projected value that may have a higher talent level. But the problem is, we needed a talent level for 2020. We don't need a talent level for 2022. I mean, you definitely do need a talent level for 2022, but we need a talent for this year, you know, to kind of stop the bleeding for how bad we have been. I mean, you take a look at Andrew Thomas. Is you know he's had he's had a rough start. There's no doubt about it. I mean, he's been he's had some growing pains. But like I said, but we chucked him in there, and we, you know, like I said, I expected him to have issues the first six seven weeks. So Xavier McKinney coursed out. Matt Perrette, uh, you know, Matt. Matt, we've been slowly working into the lineup, and I just love when people go, well, Cam Fleming is our best offensive lineman. If Cam Fleming is our best offensive lineman, we got a lot of problems. That does not that does not bode well for Will Hernandez or Kevin Zeidler. But we've worked, we've worked Matt in a little bit. I'd like to see him get more and more work. Uh, Darnay Holmes, you know, the problem with Holmes is the league is starting to figure him out. You know, I think the league, is, I think the passer rating against Holmes right now is like 98%, uh, or was it was like 98.1%. Percent, uh, percentage passer rating. Uh, quarterbacks are picking on him a little bit, but you know that's but that's to be expected. He's a rookie. He's he's going to get exposed from time to time. But like I said, I I see him as a good player. Don't see him as a I don't see him as a, a game changer right now. 
Um, but I see him as a good player. He's Shane Lemieux. Shane Lemieux hasn't had an awesome offensive snap really outside of fullback. I think he's played two offensive snaps. Cam Brown, uh, you know, like I said, I, I'm, Cam Brown may have had a nice career at Penn State, but I'm just, like I said, I'm just not seeing it. T.J. Brunson, same thing. Chris Williamson got cut. He's on the practice squad. Tay Crowder, you know, Tay Crowder played. He started last week. He was horrid. <laughs> I'm sorry. He was bad. Our linebacking core right now is bad outside of, outside of Blake Martinez. We need David Mayo back. But right now, outside of Blake Martinez, our linebacking core is bad. <laughs> and everyone's going, well, Kyle, Kyler, Flackwell, Flackwell. You know my feelings about that. I'm not even going to get into Kyler. But to think Cam Brown, Carter Call from TJ Brunson, and Tay Crowder were, were, was going to be our saviors and we didn't go out and get more veteran depth was a misstep, not only by Dave Gettleman, but also a misstep by uh, Joe Judge. It's the only way around it. We should have gained more of a veteran presence from that linebacker position than thinking that our sixth and seventh round draft choices were going to come in and fill the spots. Because that's just that's just not that's like trying to fill your spots with you know undrafted free agents and thinking that um, that's going to be the way to build a team because it's not you build a team through the free agency in the draft. It's sprinkled in with some undrafted free agents and players like that, but you don't you don't fill a roster with undrafted free agents. That's not how that's not how you build a win- winning organization. You need to build a core, and we haven't built a core yet. So I mean, it's it's just one of those things that I get worried now because. I'm also not really seeing the full progression from our draft class going back to Saquon Barkley. So it, are, are we getting more and more deeper in the hole now because of the fact that Gettleman does not seem to be drafting well? And I think that's going to be that's I think that's going to be an issue. Maybe that might be an issue you know, two, three years down the road as well for whoever the new general manager is. But you know, let's talk about the Washington football team. Hail to the Washington football team. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, you know what? I haven't watched any of the Washington games. So how are they doing the fight song now? I used to love that fight song. Braves on the warpath, fight for all D.C. Um, how are they doing that song? <laughs> I, have to, I, have to, I have to try to figure that one out. Washington is, well, this game is going to be interesting from the perspective of it's two teams that are very, very similar. Washington has a good to okay defense, so do we. They have a bad to horrific offense, so do we. Now, it, people are like, well, outside of the what's his name, the, the one receiver, you know, they only got one guy. You know, he's a big guy. Yeah, and you know what? Their running game sucks just as much as we do. You know, they have, um, what's the tight end they have? I can't even remember the tight end's name. I can't even I can't even think of the tight end's names right now. But you know, they have a Logan Thomas, you know, so he's to me he's, you know, he's he's, you know, Evan Ingram's much better. So, you know what, out I mean, and then you look at their defense. Their defense has a lot of talent. I love Montez. I really thought the hopes hoping the Giants were gonna draft him. Of course you got Chase Young. You got some pretty good linebackers. You also throw in what's his name, Kerrigan. So I mean it's they're not, like I said, their defense is not a horrific defense. They, they, they have pretty much, I would say, a parallel defense to us. So it's almost two, it's the mirror image of two teams having to play each other. And I laugh because you would sit there and say, well, somebody has to win. And why not the Giants? And I laugh because, you know what, someone doesn't have to win. You could always tie. <laughs> this could be a 17-17 game for all I know. The, the the X factor for this for me is not Kyle Allen, if he's coming back from injury, it's Alex Smith. Alex Smith is that 36-year-old savvy veteran. Of course, he hasn't played in over a year. Finally got in the game last week with the injury to uh, Allen. And he's just that guy that if he gets hot, he can, he can wreck a team. And outside of James Bradbury, and I know Ryan Lewis had one game, and he kind of regressed a little bit. Our secondary outside of James Bradbury, you know, is not. Um, I would not say it's it's sure-handed, and I don't mean that in reference to ball catching the ball. I just mean the fact that it's it's not complete outside of Bradbury. Peppers, like I says, is up and down at best. Julian Love has been exposed at times. Corey Ballantine, he should just return kickoffs, and I don't even think he does a good job at that. 
Isaac Yitam. When you don't hear its name, it's usually because he's not even on the field. And, uh, Ryan Lewis, like I said, one good game and, you know, played okay against Dallas. So, I mean, it's it's one of the it's one of those things that, you know, I, I like the fact that uh, Logan Ryan's starting to start himself on the defense. So I think that's going to be helpful. But like I said, it's it's a game that somebody it's a game that somebody has to win. Will it be the Giants? Will it be Washington? I don't know. I, I, I've been trying to handicap this game now for like three days. And I can't sit there and say, well, the Giants are so much better than Washington at X. And I can't sit there and in the same regard and say the same thing about Washington against the Giants. It's just one of those ugly games. It's one of those games like last year where we had to play them twice. And people are like, well, we have Washington's number. Yeah, we, we probably do. But this is now Ron Rivera's Washington. You know, so, I mean, it's how to handicap it. I mean, like I said, I right now I got it at a 17-17 tie. <laughs> and I laugh because I was telling someone yesterday, you know what's going to happen? Graham Gano is going to be 17-17. Graham Gano is going to line up in overtime and with a minute left or 30 seconds left to miss a field goal because he's been so automatic. That's just where our luck is this season. I will tell you this. If we lose this game, it's not far-fetched to think that we could possibly go 0-16 if we lose this game. Because looking at the schedule, we got some, you know, after these next first five, next five weeks, we got, we, got, we, got, we got a horrific schedule after that. And the way we're playing, the way Daniel Jones is playing, I am concerned about Daniel Jones and the way he's sensing the rush right now. So we're not going to... We're not going to get into that because we're going. Hopefully, the line's going to pick up a little bit, and hopefully, Daniel Jones is going to start dumping off the ball more. But I have concerns the way he's looking at the rush. So, and the way that Washington can rush the rush the quarterback, it's going to be interesting. We're going to do a deeper dive um, probably on Friday about this, and maybe I'll give a prediction, and we can kind of figure out and go from there. But like I said, this is going to be. This is going to be a tough to almost impossible game to handicap, even though the Giants are favored. And again, this is Tim with Online Big Blue bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. And as always, if you could like, if you could subscribe, if you could ring that bell, you think you know what that means? That'd be awesome.